When you think about Mount Sinai, most people imagine a mountain similar to the one in the 1950s classic, The Ten Commandments. And typically, they believe that it is located in the Sinai Peninsula. But this is due to a tradition that goes back to the 300s AD when Constantine told his mother about a dream that he had. Then she goes on a pilgrimage to the area where St. Catherine's Monastery is going to eventually be established. And she says, this is exactly how my son described it in his dream. And ta-da, we have a new tradition. This is not a reliable source. To find the real Mount Sinai, we have to go to the only reliable source that we have, the Bible which lists a series of details that must be matched to even consider a location as Mount Sinai. First, we have to determine the correct location. God made it clear that he was going to bring his people out of the land of Egypt. In an ancient Egyptian maps going all the way back to both the early and late proposed Exodus dates, the Sinai Peninsula is considered either part of Egypt or an Egyptian territory. I sincerely doubt that God led the people from Goshen to have them wander around Egyptian-controlled area for 40 years. If the mountain isn't in the Sinai Peninsula, then where is it? In Paul's writings, he says that Mount Sinai is in Arabia. Back in Exodus, Moses is in the land of Midian when he sees a burning bush on Sinai. Together, these reveal that the mountain is in the land of Midian, which is in Arabia. From there, several locations are possible, but two peaks particularly are notable. Jebel el Laws means Mountain of the Almonds, and almonds were incorporated into the temple candlestick design, and Aaron's rod that budded produced, you guessed it, almonds. The other is Jebel Makla, meaning burnt peak. This is our focus. We're told that Sinai was on fire when God visited the Israelites. Now take note of the two-tone coloring on this mountain. That is not a shadow. The mountain is very distinctly burnt at the higher elevation, and some say that this is because the stones were formed during volcanic activity. But if this was the case, then the rocks would have the same shade all the way around, and these stones are only burnt on the top. They're not burnt underneath or on the inside, which disproves the volcanic theory. Now we have to consider another feature of Sinai, and this has to be a small plain part of the way up where the 70 elders waited for Moses. And unlike the traditional site, this is a feature at Jebel Makla. It also has a cave, which is important because the prophet Elijah fled to Sinai, staying on the mountain in a cave while hiding from Jezebel. Then there's the rock at Horeb. God told Moses to go to the rock at Horeb and strike it. But in a region where there is nothing but rocks, how was Moses to know which rock was the rock? Try this one. It is a giant 60-foot boulder split clear in two, standing in a plain west of Jebel Makla that couldn't be missed. Moses also built an altar and erected pillars at the east base of Sinai, and we can still see remnants of both. The altar is actually a complex that would have allowed for orderly lines to sacrifice animals, and the pillars, now crumbled and scattered, would have been about 26 inches wide. Opposite the valley, still heading east, there's a small fenced area, and inside are stones where presumably the golden calf resided with a large altar in front. There's also carvings that reveal cattle worship in the area and are one of the only places in Arabia that has Egyptian-style carvings of cattle. Close to this area is what appears to be a very large graveyard, and a graveyard of this size is unusual in the here, because this is a nomadic region. There are no large cities in the immediate vicinity. Only a massive group could have needed such an extensive burial location. Finally is the archaeological evidence that this area was inhabited continuously for some time. There's numerous ancient pots and tools, grinding stones, and more that have been discovered near the mountain's base. Let's compare Jebel Makla against our biblical checklist. It's not in Egypt, but in the land of Midian in Arabia. There is evidence of fire on top of the mountain and the surrounding peaks. It has a small plain for the 70 elders to wait. It's got a cave. To the west is a giant 60-foot tall split rock. There's an altar complex and remnants of stone pillars at the base. Across the valleys, an area that could have hosted the Golden Calf Incident. There's Egyptian-style carvings of cattle and a huge graveyard. And finally, we have a large area that is big enough for the Israelites to camp. 
complete with artifacts that show, yes, this area was inhabited. That is a lot of biblical details to be met, and Jabal Makla checks every single box. There's no way to know for certain if this is Mount Sinai. The only way would be if you actually found the original set of commandment fragments that Moses smashed. But I am confident in saying that this location provides the best match to the biblical description.